Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to show you how we repaired and resurfaced this badly damaged concrete walkway. Now this stamped concrete was about two years old. The owners threw a bunch of de-icing salts on it. They were told not to, but they did anyway. And this is what de-icing salts are going to do to your concrete guys. I don't care how good you seal it. If you keep pounding the de-icing salts to concrete in an area, a freeze thaw area, you know, we live in Maine, so we get a three or four months of winter, it's going to eventually eat through the sealer and damage your concrete. So we were hired. They didn't want to rip this out, so they hired us to come in and, and just fix this and try to restore it to its original look. Now we're going to do this with a with an overlay mix, a bag mix of overlay, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Now the first thing we do whenever we do concrete repair is we got to get the concrete back down to the sound concrete. So good, hard, dense concrete. And most all the time that includes grinding the surface to get all that loose, bad concrete off. Now this had a lot of loose and bad concrete that was still stuck to it. And just pressure washing something like this isn't going to be enough. You really got to grind it and remove anything loose. And you can tell, you know, once once we go over it with the with the grinders, uh, it's taken a good part of that surface right off, and it's going to give us a really good base of the concrete to apply this overlay mix to, so it'll bond really, really good. Now, if you want to learn how to do this stuff, I can teach you how to do this stuff right here. All right, so this is a sneak look inside the concrete underground where I have multiple trainings multiple different categories on how I teach you how to pour and finish concrete, how to repair concrete, how to do epoxy coatings. There's just multiple different trainings where I go in depth and teach you how to do all this stuff. All right, back to the video, guys. Uh, and this is actually one of the trainings in there. I go into more depth in this itself other than just this video right here so all the steps are included in the training but so you can see uh, Eric and Luke are getting the concrete ground and you know when you're grinding stamp concrete the surface is very uneven so <laughs> what we found is usually the best way to grind stamp concrete is is with a, just a small grinder that's going to go in and out of all the little imperfections in the surface you know, all the dips and humps and everything in the surface. And this is kind of what we're using right here is just a diamond cup wheel on a small grinder with the vacuum attachments. And that works pretty good. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but it works pretty good. You know, as far as doing this, doing this on your own, um, this is going to require some kind of skill, you know, and some labor to get this done and get it done right. Especially the finished part since we're going to restamp it. So that is, that in itself requires quite a bit of skill, but it is possible with with you know watching my trainings, maybe doing something a little bit smaller at first. You might not want to tackle something quite this big, but there are you know we're using a three eighths inch thick stampable overlay to do this because and that's because we're stamping it. We need the thickness. If you had something else that was maybe just like broom finished concrete, you didn't have to go quite that thick. There are other overlay bag mixes that you skim on that's quite a bit thinner and then you drag a broom across them and it gives it a brand new look also. You know, so some of the repair methods that I use in the concrete underground can help you with that. But right now what I'm explaining is, you know, this is our mixing station. This is the mixer we're going to use. Uh, we're using a special mixer from Colomix. Colomix donated that mixer to us to use so we could put it on here and show you how it how it works in decocrete you know we using the bags of overlays from decocrete and there's all the colors the color packs they have you can mix in with these bags so you can get all kinds of different colors i'm um, talking about the bonding agent right there and the bonding agent we put down before we do the overlay mix so the overlay bonds really well to the existing concrete and I'm going to show you how, how we do all this stuff here in a second. But, you know, we always want to be organized when we're doing stuff like this because once you start, you only have so much time to do it. You know, especially if you're working out in the sun and it's hot out, you got uh, you got to get this stuff down so you can get back to it and get a finish on it before it starts drying up too fast on you. And that's kind of what I'm explaining right there. So 
This is as easy as it is about putting the bonding agent down. You just scrub it in the surface, let it dry on. And that does a couple things for you. You know, obviously they don't call it a bonding agent for <laughs> no reason. It helps the product bond. And, but it also helps, helps minimize pinholes. Whenever you do overlays, you know, when that overlay goes down on the concrete, it, it soaks down into the concrete and forces out any air in the pores of the concrete. That air has to go somewhere, so it usually rises up through the overlay mix and creates these little pinholes. And the bonding agent will help minimize that. Now I'm just talking about like how we mix the product. We're actually going to mix two bags at a time. You could mix one bag at a time, and you could use a handheld mixer for this too. You don't need the mixer we're using, but just a handheld mixer in a mixing bucket like one of those blue or green buckets you see right there and it just makes one bag up so the bags say on them you, know, you can use between three and three and a half quarts of water so we put the water we're using seven quarts of water with two bags so we put the water in there dump the bags in mix it up for a couple minutes and this is what it's going to look like right here it's pretty it's pretty loose it's pretty liquidy so you wouldn't want to, you know, you wouldn't want to maybe use three and a half quarts of water on something that had a lot of slope to it. Maybe try three quarts. But this didn't have a lot of slope to it. it, had a little bit to it, enough to shed water. So we could use the three and a half. Now I'm using what's called a gauge rake. That little metal rake doesn't have any teeth on it. It just has two of these little, two little ends on it, one on each end that you can set to whatever thickness you want to do the overlay with, you know, usually quarter, three eighths, or half inch. So I got the tabs on the ends of that rake set to three eighths of an inch. And that way, when I drag that rake across the surface, I'm getting three eighths of an inch thick product, you know, throughout the whole, the whole walkway. And then that's what we're going to use the stamp with. So this is basically, you know, covering up that old damaged concrete, resurfacing it with the overlay that's red. <laughs> Personally, I think it's a little bit ugly, but that's what they wanted, so that's what we're giving them. And then you'll see here in a minute just how we're going to put the finish on this to, to restore it to its original look. But the product itself, the bag mix itself, I mean, it's relatively easy to mix up. And it's relatively easy to spread out. You just got to know what you're doing. I'm using a hand trowel on the edges just to touch up the edges there where the gauge rake, you know, I don't want to run the gauge rake out over the edge. So, and then as far as the edges of the walkway itself, they stick up above the lawn a little bit. Uh, at, when everything's all said and done, the owner is going to come back in here and reloom the walkway so the lawn matches the top edge. We didn't do the original stamp concrete here. They hired somebody else to do this. So if personally, if it was me, I would have done it a little bit different. I probably would have lowered, I would have lowered the walkway a little bit more to match the lawn and also match, you know, the stairs a little bit better. You'll see here in a minute what I mean about that. So once I get the, the material gauge rake to the thickness I want, I walk back up in there with my spike shoes and then I'm just running this this tool called a smoother over it, and I'm just I'm just kind of smoothing it out a little bit better than what the gauge rake left it. I'm trying to get the gauge rake lines out, and then this is basically going to be the surface that I'm going to end up stamping here in probably about 30 minutes. You'll see. By the time we get this done and get the tools washed up, we're going to jump right back on this and start stamping it because it's really hot today. That's kind of why we got that that pop-up tent there we got the first part of the shaded just to give us enough time to get the overlay mix over the whole walkway and so we can jump back on it and start stamping it and it won't start setting up on us too fast up there you can see how nice that that levy mix works though from Colomix. boy that thing just made this job so much easier being able to mix two bags up at a time too you can cover twice as much square footage because my job raking it around is actually pretty easy. <laughs> I got the easy job here. You know, I just need to get it spread out and get it to the right thickness, get it smooth, and then, you know, that's it for me. Luke and Eric back there, they're, they're measuring out the water. They're the ones dumping the bags. You know, they're the ones getting it mixed. And then Luke's, 
Luke's the one moving the machine over to me and dumping it out, bringing it back. So, you know, it's nice. It's nice having two guys mixing because one guy can be getting the water measured out in between. He can be getting the bags ready, cut open and ready, and just keeping the whole process moving. And I don't know if you noticed, just before Lou got here, I, had, I got a little pump-up sprayer there with some water in it, and I'm just keeping the surface damp. I'm not really, I don't want any puddles of water or anything, but I'm just keeping it damp. To, for a couple reasons, you know, number one is to keep it cool because it's really hot today. And then it just, if it's just damp, if the surface is just moist, it's going to keep the product from drying out too fast on us. So that just helps, that's just helps the process. You can see how the walkway matches up to that first step on the stairs. I mean, that's what I mean by if I would have done the walkway, I would have had it lowered by about four inches right there. So it was a normal step up on that first step. I don't know why they just left it like that. I thought that was crazy. But again, like I said, the owners didn't want to rip this out. They just wanted to resurface it. And it ended up costing them, you know, half as much money to do it this way versus it was, you know, to rip it out and redo it again. So as soon as we got done putting the overlay down, you know, we went back to check that first batch. And it was close to being ready. We, we tried running that heavy two foot roller over it, just a texture roller over it. And it was just a tiny bit soft for that. But the second batch was already setting up. So there was no waiting. We had to, we had to get going. Luke's just spraying on some clear liquid release and then he's using our smaller roller just to, just to put a little bit of texture on it in advance of stamping it. And that's another little trick I teach you in the concrete underground. Uh, just make it makes stamping go a little bit faster, a little bit easier if you already pre-texture the surface. So we're using these cobblestone stamps. These cobblestone stamps got really deep grooves in them. <laughs> That's why we had to go at least three eighths of an inch thick on the overlay. If we just use a, if we just were to use a stamp without the deep grooves, we could have gone a quarter inch on this, and you know, not only save some product, but save a little time putting it down. But the cobblestone stamps, they're pretty cool. There's definitely a technique to putting these down, especially if you're putting them down on a curved walkway like this. And then there's a, there's a timing aspect to stamping concrete too, to make sure everything comes out right. You know, you don't want to start too late. You definitely don't want to start too, too early either. Or you could make a mess, but uh, timing stamp concrete is definitely one of the key aspects to learning how to stamp successfully. And you can see how we're just going. We're just picking up from the back, moving it to the front, making sure we got good texture, making sure the grooves all come out good. Eric's going to just keep pre-rolling texture in for us. So as we set the stamps down, you know, that we know the surface is already textured. All we really need to do is just get the grooves tamped in really good. And then if we get texture from the stamp too, that's just a double bonus. But overlays, you know, now we're in the shade. Now the clouds have come over, but it's still really hot and humid out. So this overlay mix was just from start to finish. It was, it was crazy. We just had to keep working. But once we got half, we're about half done now, I'd say, you know, it gets a little less stressful knowing, okay, it's this, this last piece here is going to take 10, 15 minutes for us to do, and we know we, know we can uh, achieve that even though it's really hot out. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Do you think this is something you could tackle on your own, like some type of overlay for repair? Um, this overlay is even harder than the concrete when it cures. If you're using a 4,000 PSI concrete, the overlay mix is dry much harder than that. You could use it to repair pool decks, patios, sidewalks. Um, you could overlay and stamp a garage floor. You could overlay and stamp a, if you if you got a slab in your house and you want stamped concrete in your house, you could use this overlay mix to do that with. It doesn't have to just be used on repairs. Uh, most of the time you're gonna go 3 8 of an inch with a stamped overlay. 
you've got some spalling, you know, in, in a garage floor or in a driveway, you could use this overlay mix to repair the spalling in the driveway. Depending on how thick it is, you'd either use this bag or you might use their DecoCrete's thinner bag overlay mix to do it with. But there's definitely a, a little bit of a learning curve to it. That's why I got these videos up here for you to see if it's something you want to try to do on yourself or if you need to hire somebody like me to do it or not. But there's a lot of potential out there for doing not only just stampable overlays, but you know, overlays for repair, overlays for broom finish. You could put all different, any kind of texture on this you want, really. But I want to, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments. How do you think this came out? Would you have done something different here? Do you like this stamp or not? And do you think you could do an overlay mix like this? All right, so that's it for the stamping. That's, that's drying up real fast up there already. So basically that's it for today. So we'll leave that today, come back tomorrow, rinse it, wash it, get all that residue from the liquid release off it. We'll teak wash it, give it a little black charcoal teak wash, and then gotta let that dry out for a day or two and then come back and seal it. So we'll see you when we come back. All right, so this was the finished look. You know, Luke went back, washed it, teak washed it, and then a couple days later we sealed it. And this was the finished look. So it really came out really good. This is how it looked before. If you remember, it was the surface was peeling off. It was scaling off. Had a lot of loose concrete on it that we had to grind off. And then, you know, once all that was done, obviously the process is to get a really good finish on it. And this is the sealer we use from DecoCrete, their D1 sealer. So again, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.